welcome to Essex TV News with me, Caroline Dunmore. And me, Andrew Smith. Today we'll be discussing the biggest news stories on campus, covering everything from the free education demonstration to the university's marking boycott. Essex Police have released more than 70 CCTV images in a bid to find witnesses of the murder of an Essex student in June. 31 year old Nahid Almanea from Saudi Arabia was found with 16 stab wounds in the Salary Brook Trail in Greenstead. The CCTV images show potential witnesses and are taken from cameras in Avon Way, Purcell Close, the Hunwick Road shops off Hawthorne Avenue and at the Barry on Capon Road close to the university. Ms Almanea was attacked at 10.40am on Tuesday the 17th of June as she walked from her home in Woodrow Way to the University of Essex campus in Wivenhoe. In the four months since her murder, no motive has been found. Senior Investigating Officer DCI Mark Hall of the Kent and Essex Serious Crime Directorate said, These potential witnesses may hold vital information about who killed Nahid. I am making a personal plea for people to come forward. Think back to that morning and ask yourself if you were close to Avon Way, the Salary Brook Trail or the University campus. If you recognise someone, call 01245 282 103. Alternatively, information can be passed anonymously to Crime Stoppers on 0800 555 one. Tom Phillips reports. intense period of engagements for several weeks, I suppose, after the incident. And once the police have finished their investigations uh, within our arena of students and, and people who would have known Nadine, um, obviously it became much more a wider issue with the public and the university in general. So um, since then, there's not really been much communication between the police and the police national academy as such. We've had a couple of little calls, a bit of updates on the more registered information, a little, um, some queries about Generally, I think the police are liaising much more closely with the university as an entity rather than this department. Um, we talked about the memorial for uh, Nahid, um, obviously his father was very big there. Could you tell us if there is any uh, talks of a memorial event for Nahid? Oh, yeah, there certainly is. I don't know what, in what depth. I mean, I think the family were um, inquiring um, if there might be some sort of um, form of memorial. I'm absolutely certain that the university will be doing that, whether that takes the form of a scholarship or whether it takes the form of uh, a physical entity on the, on the campus that, that, that can be there uh, for perpetuity, I'm not sure. I think that kind of discussion is, is taking place at a higher level. So I'm sure that there will be something in the course of time. I think probably it's the fact that there's an ongoing investigation which has probably gone on for longer than when I've anticipated. I think probably any sort of the reason why there might not have been something set up very quickly is because, in a, like all things, when there's a, a long police investigation taking place, any sort of activity that brings it to a conclusion, like some sort of decision about uh, a memorial um, activity or event, um, might be a bit inappropriate until it's got to some conclusion. But I would think that at some point in the near future, there will be something, some sort of um, take, some sort of gesture made. Um, I think that's been discussed at higher levels. And um, finally, t tell us about Nahid as a, uh, as a student here at the University of Essex. Well, I didn't teach her. I undoubtedly would have seen her walking around, as I do generally see quite a lot of students uh, around the department. Um, we're a big department. There's a lot of students in here. The, uh, she was a student on the Essex English Language Programme, and the Essex English Language Programme course director was her teacher, her main tutor. So he knew her very well indeed, uh, as did several other Essex English Language Programme tutors. Um, and everybody who taught her had the same view that she was an extremely hard-working student. You know, we have students like across all departments of students of a range of enthusiasms and abilities, but she was extremely hard-working, very well-liked, um, uh, and uh, she got extremely good grades. She, I think she got the highest score in the most recent test. So everything was looking extremely promising that she'd make enormous progress and come out you know, with flying colours at the end of the programme. So I know that you know the teaching staff that knew her were devastated because they did like her very much and they did get on very well with her. So it was a big shock for everybody. 
Richard, thank you so much for your time. Okay. Teaching and academic related staff belonging to the UCU formally notified the university of its intention to begin industrial action on Thursday the 6th of November. Taken as part of a national protest in response to members' concerns about proposed changes to the pension scheme, USS, the ind industrial action has taken the form of an assessment and marking boycott. Members of schools and departments will now refuse to mark coursework and assignment pieces. Yesterday, the University informed students that the UCU will be consulting their members about potentially suspending the action on the 20th of November. It was announced today that UCU and University representatives have agreed a series of negotiating meetings to attempt to resolve the issue in a more peaceful manner. The boycott affected members um, at, the si at 66 universities, making the industrial action a nationwide concern. Sally Hunt, the Union's General Secretary, said that there was no need for any dramatic action but pointed out that previous proposals put forward for universities were full of holes and evidence suggesting that they would work keeps being exposed as misleading. This week, the Students' Union is hosting Raising and Giving Week. On Monday, thousands of students were involved in the rag launch in the squares. Over 30 stalls full of cakes, popcorn, candy floss and even a live DJ set filled Square 3 with a fundraising atmosphere. Yesterday, students participated in a special class of Zumba, Exercising in glow-in-the-dark conditions, those who came raised money for local charities. For those who missed it, Sub-Zero will be hosting another class tomorrow morning. Today, the Music Society is holding a buskathon. The buskathon will run for 15 hours in the squares, providing students with live music throughout the day. All proceeds will go into the RAG Fund. Sports clubs and societies are hosting various events to raise money throughout the week. So far, we have raised £1,748.98. The total is updated hourly on SXSU's website. Tomorrow, there will be a special edition of the SU Bar Quiz after the SRF, aptly named RAG Quiz. The Societies Guild and Essex Blades Sports Federation have been competing head-to-head -to, -head to try and raise as much money as possible for charity. RAG Week will end on Friday with a funfair-style event. Last week, it emerged that the trustee board went over the heads of the Student Representative Forum and overturned part of a motion to support the protests on free education in London. This has led to anger on the part of the more politically active students. On the 30th of October, the Student Representative Forum passed a motion supporting today's demonstrations for free education. As a result, the Students' Union promised to provide free transport to London, where the demonstration is taking place. The motion passed with a 2-1 majority, supported by SU Campaigns Officer Adria Portacabaye. Since then, the National Union of Students has withdrawn its support for the protests, citing safety reasons. As a result, the SU's trustee board overturned part of the motion passed at the SRF for the same reason, sparking backlash from students. Essex Radical Platform posted on social media about the ineffectiveness of the Students' Union. They called for the removal of Chantal Le Carpenter as president of the SU, who opposed the free education motion. Despite no backing from the Students' Union, the mem members of the university attended the free education demonstration today. We have Chantal in the studio with us just to give a brief overview of the situation. So the Students' Union is a charity. Um, and what that means is that it needs a trustee board. Uh, trustee boards are there to make sure the Students' Union is running in a financially secure way, um, that it is running in a very legal way, um, and that in no way we are ruining the reputation of the organisation. The Students' Union uh, Trustee Board is run by, and or sits on, um, it, seven trust sabbatical trustees. Um, the six student, uh, elected student uh, trustees sit on it, and also uh, three trustees are appointed externally, um, and they're appointed based on their expertise in, in finance, business and law. The trustees uh, made a decision after the motion was passed when more information was found. Um, the NUS withdrew uh, on the grounds of the fact that the organisers had um, no adequate risk assessment uh, and no public liability insurance. From a trustee point of view, um, there were a lot of concerns and the trustee board made the decision to overturn that part of the motion. The Students Union is very much in support of free education um, and all of the political elements still very much stand. The trustee board had to make a decision on this and with the advice of external members um, who are way more, uh, uh, more versed in these things than I am um, and our insurers came back and said that our insurance wouldn't be um, 
would be void if anything were to happen to students. So the trustee board has a duty of care to those students. Um, we didn't want to be supporting or um, endorsing an event or paying for students to go to an event um, where we couldn't actually ensure their safety. Um, thank you very much, Caroline and Andrew. Students are suffering from sleepless nights because of music blaring from a houseboat. Residents in the New Maltings Flats in Havon Road, Colchester, have filed complaints throughout November after being disturbed by the occupants of the boat. Drum and bass music thumps from the vessel, which is moored at King Edward Quay. They say this music is keeping them awake far into the early hours of the morning. The police have since been called and Colchester Council has undertaken an ongoing investigation into the source of the noise. Last week, members of the Students' Union had the chance to vote for part-time student officer positions. Voting opened on the 12th of November and came to a close on Friday at 4pm. Three positions were elected. Sam French was appointed as Equality and Diversity Officer and Young Lee as Deputy Chair of the Student Representative Forum. After an investigation into the appointment of Postgraduate Officer, the Students' Union has ruled that the election will be rerun in the coming weeks. Now an update on the Blades with our sports guy TJ Eldad. Thanks Caroline. So this is the start of American football box season where the Blades played against the UE Pirates. The Blades made a convincing start leading into the third quarter with two new. However, the Pirates managed to get a touchdown later on in the game around victorious on an extremely rainy day. On the bright side, the men's and women's first basketball teams continued their cup run this season. Women's basketball dominated their home fixture against Medway, scoring over 100 points in what coach Mark Lloyd describes as a brilliant response from the Ed Fosher defeat in the league last week. They were also positive from Ultimate Frisbee, who came back from a mixed tournament recently. Having improved their standing to 13th in the competition, the Blades arrived back in coaches of being awarded most spirited team. We now turn our attention back to the showcase games. The men's volleyball will be the main attraction tonight where they will play against Kent University to continue their 100% record in the box season, while the women's basketball hope to get a win under their belt following their convincing win against Medway in the cup. That's it for now. Back to Andrew and Caroline. Thanks, TJ. And that brings the show to an end. We want to thank the staff at the Students' Union, Chantal Carpenter and Richard Bernard from the International Academy for their contributions to the show. We also want to give a huge thanks to the Media Centre for making this broadcast possible. We will be back on air on the 21st of January, so until then, I've been Caroline Dunmore. And I've been Andrew Smith. Goodbye. Goodbye.